was not only meeting Korean people, which would have been pretty normal considering I was in South Korea. Come to think of it, 90% of the people I had met thus far were foreigners. That's not to say orientation was comfortable. In fact, being bombarded with so many different nationalities was incredibly tiring. In the space of two days, I had met Americans, New Zealanders, Australians and Canadians, all for the very first time in person. You may be wondering what rock I had been living under until then. Well, keep in mind, geographically, South Africa is very far away from all of these countries. And while South Africans tend to visit these countries, people from there don't really come to South Africa, particularly not the small farming town I was from. Also, once my parents divorced, my mum and I moved into what South Africans call a township to live with my extended family. Life became difficult and we didn't have much money for luxurious things anymore. But dinner time included a lot more people and special occasions like Mother's Day and Christmas, even Easter, became huge family affairs filled with laughter and food. Still, any foreigners living or visiting South Africa would not visit either of these two places. And yes, I did go to a private school and I did go to a public school, but we were exposed to people from other African countries rather than people from overseas. Even in university, there was one American in one of my lectures I never interacted with him. She was more mad at the fact that she was forced to do one extra year before she could enroll in the master's program. <laughs> I remember feeling so overwhelmed by the different accents, personalities and environment. Keep in mind, America is a huge place, so I had not only encountered different nationalities, but even more so different accents. It was all so interesting, but so much to take in at the same time. During my intake, there was only one New Zealander. I remember standing in the foyer with a few other foreigners and Korean guides who had decided to go out for an after-dinner snack. Mind you, this was the first time I left the campus by choice. The New Zealander seemed to be very shy. I understood this feeling and went to stand with her. She struck up a conversation with me. She started talking very slowly at first. And when I understood the conversation, it started flowing. By flowing, I mean we both started speaking faster. The faster we spoke the louder everyone else around us became. I couldn't hear her in terms of volume, but the faster she spoke, the thicker her accent became. This is not to say her accent was bad, but more that I wasn't exposed to this kind of accent before. Meaning that participating in this particular conversation was very difficult for me. The combination of culture shock, jet lag and overstimulation with all the people around us at that time really made me even more tired. Then she asked me a question. The only reason I knew it was a question was she looked at me with these questioning eyes. Luckily. My roommate came past and butted into the conversation. They saved me, man, from embarrassment and revealing of how overwhelmed I was. And let's not forget the toilet situation. I'll tell you guys about that soon. <laughs> <laughs>